Hello everyone and welcome to my tutorial on how to make custom meshes for Baldur's Gate 3. Before we get started, a little uh, warning, this video is going to be long. There's probably going to be multiple videos explaining how to do this. And I don't feel like editing this video, so if I correct myself a lot, if I am stopping in the middle of sentences doing something else, please just deal with it. Um, I'm doing this just because I want to help people out. So uh, before we can get started, there's a lot of different tools that we're going to need and that we're going to make sure you have in order. First things first, you're going to need Blender. I use version 3.6.2. Um, recently, the tool for uh, importing GR2 and DAE was updated to support uh, Blender 3 Plus, so anything above version 3. Um, previously, we had to use old versions of Blender. I hate old versions of Blender. I can't control the menus at all. I don't understand what I'm doing there. So uh, yeah, not going to be helping anyone who uh, is using old versions of Blender as I just don't know how to navigate it. Uh, second thing we're going to be needing is you're going to need the Baldur's Gate Free Modest Multi-Tool. This is getting uh, updated quite often. Uh, so make sure that you uh, keep up to date with the different releases. The last one was literally 16 hours ago. So yeah, you're going to need that. Next, uh, we're going to be needing Els Lip, which is made by Noel White, uh, who is also the person who makes, or rather I should say updates, uh, the Dio's, uh, Diminished Dio Original Sin 2, and uh, this works for Baldur's Gate 3 as well, obviously. Uh, this is the tool that we need for importing and exporting into Blender. It is a uh, plug-in. So grab the L-slip first, uh, make sure you check in regularly. If this is getting updated, oftentimes this is also getting an update. So make sure you check both uh, anytime it has an update. Um, with the Norbyte uh, plugin, I had some issues with uh, getting it into my Blender preferences and plugin. Let me give it another second to load. Okay, I don't know why that's loading for me right now. There we go. Um, it is this one. I was getting some issues with using the normal just install path. So I followed the uh, manual method install cor um, directions. So if you're having an issue with it, try to just uh, follow that along. The link for everything will be in the description. All right, other tools you're going to be needing is You are also going to need the lovely Padme for Thousands tools. So she's got several plugins for Blender that make everything so much easier. First things first, the Create LODs Baldur's Gate Free Edition. That is a absolute must if you want your mesh not to just disappear. Uh, sure, you can make LODs yourself, but in my opinion, why not just grab this tool? It works. It's incredibly convenient. and It's perfect. Normal map transfer is also a good tool to grab, if, specifically if you're going to be doing uh, head models. I myself don't really do that that often, and I don't really find that I need normal map transfers, but it's a good idea to grab it if you're having issues with neck seams. Um, Baldur's, Gray, uh, Baldur's Gate Free head order is also very convenient. Um, not as necessary for our specific process, as we're going to be needing to do this manually. But it's a good idea to grab it if you intend to use this tutorial to try to make um, head models. Yeah. All right, let's get started. All right, so moving forward, uh, I myself, I have a Baldur's Gate free modding uh, folder where I keep everything. I encourage you to do the same. Um, we're going to be, first off, launching the Baldur's Gate free modders multi-tool. Because when you want to view and explore the different assets in the game, you're going to be needing to, first off, when you have a new version of this game, you are going to be prompted to configure here. You want to tell it where ls uh, lib divine exe is located. That's the other tool we, load, uh, we, um, we downloaded. It's called the export tool. And you're just going to tell this thing, the path to this exe right here. Then you're going to tell it where Baldur's Gate 3 is located. That's obviously going to be different for everyone. And uh, a game a documents folder location. In my experience, it found this by itself when I showed it where Baldur's Gate 3 was. Next, we're going to be uh, unpacking pack files. So unpacking pack files is really, really 
important. Without it, everything is going to be uh, in a pack file and you're not going to be able to view it. You can't just find the game files uh, without opening these bad boys up. Um, selecting which ones of these you need for what you're trying to do is really important. Obviously, as I said, this is about meshes. So what am I going to want to grab? I want to grab materials, models, textures, visual textures, shared and Gustav are one of the ones you should always be grabbing as well as I believe English pack um, and I think some people also grab the hotfixes I don't think I did if you have a fucking NASA computer and you have like let's say 50 fucking terabytes or some shit go ahead and unpack all of these but this takes a long time it says so itself right here uh, it's gonna take a long time to uh, oh shit don't do what I did. If you've already unpacked it, you don't need to do that. Um, once you've unpacked everything, uh, you can decompress files if you want to. Again, what decompressing does, it, it converts everything that you've just unpacked into LSX uh, files. I tried to do this at the first time when I was experiencing with the, mod, uh, with the modding tool. It takes a really long time. And it does what you will be doing yourself when you're looking for these files. It's not a necessary step. Uh, once you've unpacked everything, you need to index your files. This also takes a really long time. I think mine took like four hours. Uh, and while you're doing it, the it, it the modern multi-tool is a really good tool. But I don't have the absolute best computer in the world. And it can and most likely will slow your computer down. This isn't something you can just have going in the background without feeling the effects of it. I have a, uh, you know, I have a little mood lady that tells me how, uh, how much my PC is struggling right now. And uh, yeah, let's just say it was red. But uh, once you've indexed everything, you can start using the index search. So the index search is a really, really convenient tool. With this tool, I could literally search anything that I want and it's going to show me all of the files that have a either got what I just searched in the name of the file like in the title of the file and if it's an LX, uh, LSX which is a form of uh, I don't even know how to really describe it I think it's metadata or something it's data basically it's lines of code and all that shit um yeah <laughs> great at explaining uh if it has like let's say I'm I look up Gale. I was like, no, I don't want to look up Gale. Uh, Asterion. Let's look him up. Um, anytime the word Asterion is then mentioned in a file as well. Uh, so if the, let's say the title of a file is underscore merged, which is, you're going to see thousands of those. If the name Asterion is mentioned inside of the file itself, it's still going to show up on your list here. So if you're looking for certain files and you're like, hmm, I'm not really seeing what I searched for in the titles of these files, most likely the word that you're looking for is inside of the file itself, which, um, depending on what you're trying to do, can be very relevant or can be entirely un uh, unrelevant. Is that a word? Doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, because obviously Asterion is a very frequently mentioned character, so you're going to see that uh, a lot. Spoiler warning, a lot of these files that you're going to be looking for are going to have things that you're going to suddenly realize, wait, I just accidentally spoiled myself. So... Unless you're okay with being spoiled, or unless you've played a lot of the game already, you know, just keep keep an eye on that. Whatever you need to do. So, I'm going to be having a look through some of these files. Uh, not with Hysterion specifically, that's just an example. And I'm going to be finding some stuff that I want to use for this tutorial. So, I'll be right back. Alright, and we're back. So, I found some meshes that I want to use. Um... You can choose to collect the same ones I will be collecting, uh, or you can just collect whichever ones you want. That's completely up to you. Um, before we go into Blender though, I am just going to show you how to specifically get these meshes. Um, there's a lot of different files you're going to find in the index search, but the specific ones if you want to do mesh modding you're going to be looking for is GR2, DAE, or FBA. Most likely, you're going to be looking for GR2, and you're going to be spe specifically collecting the DEE for those files. It's a bit complicated. Let me show you what I mean. So we've got this bodice right here that I want to grab. 
what I do is I don't bother copying the whole uh, thing. I will just collect that one that the name of it is. I don't include uh, what I copy. I don't include the actual um, file format because then your Windows is going to try to open it. Uh, search for it and unpack data. I grab this one, the day EE form, and then I just put it somewhere where I can remember it. And now we can import that into Blender. I'm going to collect a couple more and then I'll see you in Blender. Uh, if you're thinking about textures already, don't. Textures is going to be a whole other thing. There's a, lot, there's a lot going on with textures. All right, so now we're inside of Blender. We're going to go to Import, select Kalana, Import, uh, find a mesh that we want to import, and here we have it. A bit of a breakdown for all of those who uh, are new to modding. This is the armature. The armature is what controls animations. Um, so that means if I select this part of the armature, which is a bone in it, and I move it around in the pose mode, you can see how that specific bone is going to be moving the mesh. Uh, you've got your LEDs. LEDs are lower version, uh, lower res versions of the mesh, which get loaded when, you know, people have, let's say they have the mesh quality set to low, for example. Um, next up, we have weight paint. Weight paints work together with the skeleton, aka the armature. And they tell each of these names are the bone names that are in the skeleton, basically. So, for example, we just moved the... Which one was it we moved? I think we moved the chest. The chest M1. And that, uh, as you can see here, this paint... The, the weight paint here determines how much uh, um, that specific bone gets to move of the mesh, basically. Is the best way to explain it. Did I move the chest M1? Yes, I did. Okay. So a good place to, uh, a good way to really um, demonstrate this is, let's say I want this bottom part to also move when I am, uh, when that specific part of the, the bone is being moved. It's just for a demonstration sake, right? So here we go, go back in. And now you can see now the whole thing moves with it. Okay. Um, obviously we don't want that, <laughs> so let's get rid of that. I'm explaining this to you because understanding how skeletons work, understanding how weight painting works and what it means is so vital when it comes to understanding what you're doing in 3D modeling. Uh, oh shit, sorry, I hit my microphone. <laughs> anyway, um, without that, you're oftentimes just going to be looking at something and wondering, well, why is this moving so weirdly? What, are, what do I do? What you do is you go in in weight paint and you fix the problem yourself. Um, so this is a mesh that already has a Baldur's Gate free skeleton and already has weights that um, match that skeleton's names and also how it moves. If this was a mesh that was, let's say I import a Sims 4 dress or some shit, uh, I would have to either transfer weights uh, over from a already existing mesh from Baldur's Gate and attach it to that skeleton, or I would have to do it manually, uh, paint You'd still have to attach it to a skeleton from Baldur's Gate 3, but you'd have to paint uh, the paint the, the weights yourself. You can do that if you uh, want to. It's going to take you a long time. And if you're not a professional, it's probably going to fucking make you lose your mind. So for a beginner, I'd recommend just start off by um, working with meshes that already exist in the game. All right, let's get started on the actual mashup and editing of this mesh. One thing I forgot to mention when I was looking at the index search and I was showing you how to export the body is that the part where you preview the GR2 file inside of the index uh, search is when these other files DAE and FBX are actually generated. So if you're not seeing those when you're looking for the files, that's why. Uh, additionally, keep in mind that as all of these tools develop, as I mentioned, um, you're going to uh, potentially be needing to update that. I just had an issue where I ran into that. I was getting a, a weird little message when I was importing the mesh, a message, meshes, sorry, because I was uh, basically importing stuff that had been exported quite a while ago. Um, so if you get that, that's probably why. Anyway, so we're going to be choosing a different mesh real quick. Um, let me find one I like. Uh, all right. 
I have chosen this uh, skirt here. Uh, we're going to hide the LEDs. And I'm also going to hide the cloth mesh. Uh, one thing you need to know about the cloth mesh is that in theory, it's supposed to be there so that, uh, well, physics on the, a cloth uh, a skirt can be generated. Um, me and uh, a lot of the other modders have tried. We're pretty sure that it has to do with cloth physics and cloth tags and all that shit. Um, dealt with it in LSF files, all this complicated shit. Um, uh, we can't figure it out right now. Probably in the future, we'll figure it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the cloth mesh. Uh, for me, it just is a waste of space currently. Maybe one day. <laughs> so let's have this as our base and I want to find something nice to put on top of it. So let's have a look at what we could put on this thing. Um... All right, I've imported this uh, beautiful chain shirt here. Um, we're gonna hide the armature for both of them. I've already deleted the cloth mesh for this one. First things first, I don't like these details. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and delete them. Delete the LEDs as well. All right, I don't know what this is. This is some kind of belt. I don't want that either, so get rid of that. We've already got a really, uh, you know, beautiful look here, but obviously we have some uh, clipping here. Okay, so uh, honestly, I'm gonna delete all of the LEDs. I make my own LEDs using the tool that I recommended you guys earlier, the Padme uh, LED tool, and I recommend you do the same. There's no point in keeping LEDs that don't have anything to do with your mesh. Um, so we want to make sure that our mesh isn't overlapping as we have it here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my mesh and then I'm gonna go into edit mode. I turn on toggle x-ray and I toggle these things up here, the select tool with a W and then I just select all of the ones I really want to see moving. Yeah, that's good. All right, next step. Turn on proportional editing. Proportional editing is your best friend when it comes to making mashups. Select G to, uh, there we go, decide how much uh, proportional editing controls the area. If you don't know what proportional editing does, I turn it off. I move this, oh, it just gets dragged, right? Proportional editing is on, everything gets dragged. Actually, it's a little bit too much. There we go. And then you just kind of drag it out, actually. Drag that out. Drag it. And then just edit it until it suits your idea of what you want it to look like. Uh, keep in mind that, as I mentioned, uh, we don't have physics at the moment. So obviously without physics, <laughs> The meshes um, that involve anything that is like a skirt or something like that, you're gonna deal with it being sort of, it tears itself a little bit as your character moves until we figured out how physics is uh, gonna work when we import things. Because at the current stage, I could, um, you know, I could import uh, a mesh that has physics, don't change anything export it and then put it in and replace the exact same thing and it would still not have physics to my knowledge i haven't tested it myself but i've been told so um so yeah probably something and uh people who are smarter than us are gonna figure it out oops did not mean to do that anytime you make a mistake just press ctrl z okay so i like that nice and simple beautiful Okay, um, next up, uh, actually, I want to add some more stuff to this and edit it a little bit more. So I'll be back once I've done that. All right, made some edits to it, added some decorations I like. And now it's time for us to make sure that our mesh is one complete mesh. That means we need to get them off their old skeletons and put them on the new one. Way we do that is you just select the mesh you want to do it to. Hide all the other armatures, 
select the armature uh, to double select something, hold down shift as you select the next thing. Control P object, uh, set parent to object, keep transform, and done. You can go ahead and delete the old skeleton now. Now this skeleton right now is, uh, uh, not skeleton, sorry, this, uh, this mesh <laughs> now has no armature. That means if we go into this pose mode and we tell it to, you know, move everything, it's not going to be moving what we need it to be moved. That's fine. You just need an armature modifier and then to assign it to the correct uh, armature. It still has all of the weights. So now, boom, you can do what you need to do. Easy peasy. All right. We will repeat that process on these other ones. Keep in mind, um, the more you change things um, on a mesh, the more likely it is that you're going to be having to change a lot about the weights as well. For example, uh, all of these things that I found here, uh, they weren't originally in the position that uh, I've put them in now. They were in a similar, a similar position, but not in the exact same position. So if we go in here and I tell the skeleton to move its spine, as you can see, it does not know what to move. Um, oh, wait, no, sorry, that's my bad. It's because I forgot to set the armature correctly. Should have moved. I was a little bit confused because it should at least have moved a little bit, but it was just standing there as if it didn't know what to do. There we go. All right. Now. Uh, now it's moving. Um, as you can see, it's actually, oh my god, it's actually pretty perfect. I got lucky. Um, probably because the, what they are, are pretty similar. Anyway, uh, normally, however, um, you know what? I'm gonna include something here where we have to repaint the mesh, uh, with some new weights because I want to show how to do that. So give me two seconds. All right, we're back. I found something, uh, that a relatively good example. Okay. So, this is a pouch. Um, does not have a skeleton. Doesn't actually even have weights, uh, unluckily for us. So let's just get rid of the LEDs. Um, it's very cute. It's a bit oversized, so let's make it smaller. Let's figure out where we want to put it. I kind of want to put it on the side here. Make it a bit smaller again. It's got a pretty flat back, actually, so let me just sculpt that a little bit. Okay, we've given it some more shape. It's not perfect, but this is just an example anyway. So I'm going to be moving this over here now. Okay. So I'll find a good spot. Okay. It doesn't really, you know, I'm selling an illusion here, I'm not selling... Uh, perfection. <laughs> okay, so our beautiful pouch has a... Uh... I'm gonna give it... Oh, I just... Oh, wait, I gave it the right name. Okay. So this is our beautiful pouch, as I said. Um, does not have an armature, which means it has no weights. It has no... Can't Even if I add it to the skeleton, it's not gonna move. So what are we gonna do? Well, uh, at this point, we're going to be looking at weight, paint, weight painting. Where is this? I need to get rid of that. Um, <clears throat> we're going to start off by having a look at this dress on the weight paint. We're going to compare it. Let's see. So spine M and spine 2 are in this area, right? So we're going to go here, going to add a vertex group and then give it two names, spine 2M and spine 1M. Going to go into weight paint and we're going to, actually no, let's go into, let's just do this with one instead as an example because that way instead of doing this, which is a little bit annoying, I can just go in here, select, assign, boom. Now I'm going to parent this to my mesh. Uh, object keep transform. Okay, that's done. Next step to make this uh, fully functioning, as you can now test here, right? Oh, well, it's still not moving, right? That's because this doesn't have an armature. So let's add an armature modifier. Assign it to our armature. Oh, 
Well, that didn't work. Why did that not work? What did I do wrong? Hold on. Hold on, guys. <laughs> okay, that didn't take long to figure out. It's because I was moving the wrong thing. Uh, it's not moving because it needs to also be assigned to this one. I was being dumb when I said earlier, let's not do that. My bad. Okay. And then, let's do the same thing again. Edit, assign. Should be fine now. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, we could also give it weights for the chest one. I think, uh, yeah, it works with root, so that's all good. Yeah, so if we wanted to be really particular, we could give it weights with chest as well. Um, I don't feel like doing that because it works like this. Just fine. Don't need to overcomplicate it. Yeah. All right. So that's basically everything, right? Um, if this was a custom mesh, like it completely has absolutely nothing to do with uh, this game, um, this process would be a lot more involved. I haven't done that myself yet. Honestly, shouldn't be much different than what I did in my uh, my other tutorial I have for how to do it for Mass Effect. The only pro uh, sorry, not problem. The only difference really you have is that um, the way we handle importing is different. Really, the actual blender work of transferring weights and uh, testing out those weights is the same. Um, yeah, knock yourself out with that. Anyway, so one more thing to consider is right now we have quite a lot of different pieces here. Okay. Um, I gave an example earlier, I'm pretty sure I gave an example earlier, maybe I cut that out of the video, I'm not sure, where we added materials because we wanted to, you know, combine meshes for whatever reason. That wasn't necessary for this specific one. Uh, but one more thing to consider is, let's say you are hand painting textures for this one, right? Um, UV is something we haven't talked that much about, but it's really important to learn. Um, UV editing is in and of itself pretty simple, right? Uh, you are basically uh, selecting your entire mesh and then this is like wrapping... Uh, this is like... Mm, okay. I like how I said it was really simple and now I'm struggling to explain it. Um, oh God, I really don't know how to explain it now. Well, what all you need to know is that the position of these things here determine where when you have your texture where this specific part is going to be looking for a texture so for example if i only select um this part of the skirt this specific area is when you look at a texture as an image um that's where the skirt this part of the skirt is going to be looking for its texture so if uh, you have it in the wrong spot well your texture uh, doesn't know where to go. Sorry, not your texture. Your mesh doesn't know where to get its texture from. Even if you have assigned the correct texture, if the UV is wrong or out of place, then, well, good luck. Then you have to either change the texture or you have to change the UV map. One important thing to know about UV maps is that in most meshes, I've seen some meshes where this is different, but on most meshes, you only have one UV map. Even if you have two, the second one tends to be empty. Um, so let's say we wanted to actually, instead of having these two be individual items, we wanted them to be two items. Uh, we could control J and join them together. Now we have, however, we've got two UV maps. That would mean that these would always have uh, the problem where only one of them at a time is able to read the texture, basically. Um, the reason why that is a problem is you can't, once you've joined a mesh together, to my knowledge, there is no way for you to remove this UV map and then get it back on here. That's not entirely true. You could technically, you know, you could separate it. But anyway, for a beginner, this is something important to know. All right. That's why I'm teaching it to you. God, I really do know how to overcomplicate things, don't I? All right. So you wanted to join these two together. Easy. All you need to do is grab one of the UV's names, rename this UV map to this, join them together. Boom. 
now both of them are overlapping. Uh, this is actually another part where material maps can actually be really convenient. Um, because we can go in on our material map and say this one is the chain shirt, right? So we just uh, find that. Oops, sorry. Oh god, sorry. Didn't mean to jump scare anyone there. All right. Um, here we go. So we have one UV map now, but obviously, uh, as you saw just now, uh, no, these are overlapping. That means your texture wouldn't work like that. So you're going to have to edit your UV map a little bit. Um, there's multiple ways to do this. You could size this down, move the pieces around and get them to all fit together. Um, and the reason why material maps can be really convenient for doing that is because that way you can very easily only get uh, that selected which matters to you basically I did just noticed there's one part of the skirt that hasn't been assigned but that's not important okay we're not here to uh you get the basic point and if you don't well then I can't really help you because <laughs> I'm not great at explaining things all right so uh, is there anything that I've forgotten I'm trying to think if there's anything important that I have forgotten um, always a good idea to use pose mode to, you know, test your texture, uh, sorry, your, um, not your texture, your meshes movability, as you can see here, very obviously, um, this, because these two meshes here, uh, were not painted with the idea that, obviously, this part originally has a, uh, piece of, like, pants underneath it, so, you know, it'll move in a little bit. Of a weird way you can go in to weight paint and manually fix that um ba -ba -ba, right here for example you can see uh all you really need to do for this is I'm pretty sure you just have to get rid of this part honestly oops that's too much remember control z is your friend okay That's a little bit too much as well. <sighs> Why is it always when you're trying to explain something that things don't really work out the way you need them to? You ever notice that? It's so annoying. Okay. It's not perfect, but you you know what I was trying to do, right? You 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 saw it. You'll be able to figure it out yourself. You should don't is this double sided? Anyway, okay. Uh, I'm just going to control Z that because I don't care. Um, that's the weight part and everything explained. Next, we are going to be talking about... Um, what else do we need to talk about, guys? I'll figure that out and come back to you. Um, okay. I couldn't remember anything else important that I needed to talk about. If uh, it stumbles upon me, it stumbles upon me. So we're going to get this mesh ready now for export. All right, so we've got uh, a lot of different things here. I'm going to rename all of these because I like to do that and it's how I remember what I'm doing the best. Let's name this something Drew Dress. Okay, so that's the dress part. This is, what is this? These are buttons. What is that? Um, that's the Skirt. Thought I joined these together. No, I didn't. Right. Um, that's the belt. And then we've got our patch. Alright, perfect. Next up, we're going to be making LODs. <clears throat> LODs are pretty simple. What you do is, first of all, make your life easy, get Padme's add-on, press create LOD1. Go in here in the modifier, on the decimate, move to first, apply. I'm pretty sure that you're supposed to let it like happen as you export. I think, maybe not, I could be wrong. Um, but in my experience, it doesn't do that. Another important thing is you need to, when you have an armature, uh, it's important that you move it to first so that you can apply the decimate 
if you don't do that, you I'm pretty sure you apply everything, which includes your armature modifier. You don't want to apply your mod modif armature modifier because then you have to make another one. It's annoying. Don't do that. Um, and also, I think it causes some issues in the sense that like your decimate might just not you know be correct. Uh, LED levels are always one to four and Technically zero being this one, your um, high res one. Um, as you can see, ugly. Looks like, you know, 2002. <laughs> I was so offended. I don't know why I got so offended there. Uh, you can choose for yourself. Um... Oh, wait, sorry. I forgot one important thing before we uh, make LODs. You need to go into your weight paint. Uh... No, you need to, uh, sorry, select everything. Control A, apply all transforms, and then you need to uh, select each one, go in weight paint, and then limit total. Make sure it's limit uh, all groups to four, and just continue to do that everywhere. Um, it's because I sometimes... But this is the fix that was recommended to me sometimes when I have issues where I have a lot of LODs and it won't export. Um, you could also quant quantize. Uh, I might do that if we run into any exporting issues. It should fix it in theory. But, you know, that's another nice part about uh, 3D modeling is you oftentimes meet challenges, you know, you've, you've never had before and you got to figure out what the fuck you're doing. It's, it's like math, but fun. That's well, actually, I quite liked math. Because actually, you know what? I quite liked math for the exact same reasons I like three D modeling. It presents, uh, well, it gives me a challenge, and at the end, uh, I have something to show for it—a result, something I can feel proud and accomplished for having done. Remember that. Remember me and math every time you uh, you struggle with a three D mesh. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't think I need to explain what I'm doing right now. The renaming, by the way, that's not. It doesn't matter. You could name all of this whatever the fuck you wanted. It's not gonna matter. I'm pretty sure there's some modding. Uh, I don't remember it at the top of my head, but I've definitely done modding before for games where it did matter what you named this in Blender. Um. But for this, it doesn't. You could name this Poop if you wanted to. You could name it uh, Apples if all I care. It won't affect anything. It's just a name. Okay. Um, you guys saw what I was doing here. I'm gonna be back when I have done and uh, done when, when I'm done and have made LEDs for everything. All right. I have finished making the. LEDs for everything. Uh, just for good measure, I'd like to control A all transforms again. And yeah, now theoretically at this point, we're going to be ready to export. But you have one big thing stopping you, and that is export order. Export order is very important for allowing, like for uh, the plugin to allow you to even export. Um, it's also relevant for how you're going to be doing your. Um, when you implement your custom mesh, which, holy shit, I am not smart enough to make a tutorial on that. I figured it out by piggybacking and asking people questions and all of that stuff. If I have become good enough at it, I'll, I'll explain that it. Explain it. Oh, wow, I can't speak English. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's possible. You can figure it out yourself as well. I might make a tutorial. I, I don't know, man. It's... It's hard out here because it's a lot of code and I'm not good with that. I'm not... Okay. <laughs> I'm focusing on the meshes part. That That's what matters to me. Um, okay. So, export order. You go to uh, object properties. You select your... Uh, whatever part of your mesh you want to start off with. Export order. If this was a head, it would be a lot more important which parts you give which export order. But since this is a uh, res, we can make up our own export order. But we need to stick to a simple principle. And that is it goes one, two, three, four, five, right? These are for all the LOD ones. And then it goes six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten. And continuing that way. Um, yeah, that, that's really all there is to it. I'm going to show you how to set it up now. So uh, get into your object properties, get down to Baldur's Gate free settings and have a look here. Export order is correct. LOD level is zero. LOD distance is uh, also correct. This one needs to be two. This one needs to be three. And this one needs to be four. This one needs to be five. Also, make sure you set your LOD distance correctly for um, is this defined by this? Pretty sure it's not. No, it's not. Okay. I don't know why these are just random right now. Anyway, uh, set your LOD distance correctly. Make sure you have the right numbers. There we go. At this point, um, if you don't want to do this step, by the way, you could just export without LODs. Only thing is then your mesh is just going to disappear when you, you know, have lower graphic settings or loading in or viewing it from far away. So don't listen. It, it might be convenient for testing, but you want LODs. Um, okay. I'm going to show you how to do this as well. So as I said, we stopped here at five. This one is going to be six. This one is going to be seven. Uh, eight, nine, and ten. Okay. Make sure you make sure make sure that you make sure. Yeah. Make sure you check that the LOD uh, level and distances are set correctly. They aren't. Um. Sometimes they defer a little bit. I don't know based on what. I could also go in here and just quickly like change. Yeah, there we go. Oh, this one was set to the wrong ones. Interesting. Let me just double check that they're right. Yeah, they are. Okay. That happens sometimes. Anyway. So this one is six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then we start up here at LD2 with level eleven here with level twelve. Etc. Etc. Until you are done, and I will be back once we are. Okay, I have finished that ending at an export order of twenty-five. Again, apply all transforms. Uh, I'm also going to remove these tags. It won't change anything whether or not you keep them. I'm just doing it because that's what I like to do. I also do need to set these to not being rigid. Good thing I just caught that. This is not a rigid mesh. It is a moving mesh. It moves. Ah, oh, God. Actually, I wonder what would happen if I... Why are these all suddenly in cloth? Oh, right. Uh, God. It, it won't matter, I'm just doing it because that's just what I do. <laughs> the cloth one doesn't have an effect, the rigid one does. Boom. That's all I needed to say. Always have to make it more ex you know, complicated than it needs to be. Okay, so we can go ahead, press A to co collect, collect, select everything, export, and I'm just going to export this as tutorial. You need to export it as a GR2, unless you want to go through uh, forming the, the export. One of the tools we downloaded earlier can form DAAs uh, to GR2s. Don't bother, just do what I'm doing. <laughs> Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, I just keep the default settings and I haven't had a single problem with them. So, you know, do that. Export. Give it a minute. If it throws an error at you, which I really hope it doesn't, this is normal on bigger meshes, it can take quite a little while. There we go. Okay, if it had given you an error, usually up here, Saying something about make sure your head uh, head export order uh, not your head your export order is correct. That just means you most likely missed one here, you know, because your brain might go one two three four. But as I said, it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten. All right. So um, that's your mesh exported. Um. 
am I going to bother showing you what this looks like in game? Yes, yes I am. Uh, I'm gonna show you that in a minute, but let me say this. When it comes to making a custom mesh, the thing that is the most involved, uh, at least thus far for me, is setting up your custom mesh to have a custom item in game. Giving it its materials, giving those materials the right textures. And then, because you're most likely new at this, figuring out what the fuck you're doing. This isn't a single, single, simple, sorry, drag and drop kind of action. It's involved, it takes a while to learn, but it's, it's not impossible by any means. Um, as the game continues to uh, have been as popular as it has been thus far, I'm sure uh, a lot more cool developers are gonna go in and wanna create modding tools for it. We already have amazing uh, modding tools because of people who are lovely. Thank you guys for that. Uh, so, you know, be thankful for what we have. <laughs> okay, I uh, will see you guys when I am showing off this mesh in game and it's going to look most likely horrendous because it won't have the correct textures. And we're back. Here's our custom mesh. Uh, obviously, as I discussed, you are, uh, <laughs> textures are, um, <laughs> oh, I don't know if you just heard my cat. Anyway, uh, the textures are obviously a uh, minefield of their own. You've got some very minor, uh, clipping as, you know, when the leg moves. Also, one thing I should note is your character will most likely uh, have no, uh, underwear on. <laughs> um, what else is there to say? Uh, yeah, I most likely am going to do a tutorial in which I showcase how to set up unique items and also what you're going to do about textures because textures are very different in Baldur's Gate than you might expect. Oh, look at her serving looks. Wow, amazing. Uh, yeah. Textures are very different because they are using something called virtual textures. Oh, sorry, I hit that. That means it's not that easy to just find the texture for the item that you have uh, used as your base. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to really say. It's not going to be easy to just find the textures. Uh, I personally, I like the idea of painting my own textures as it gives me more freedom and honestly painting my own textures would uh, take less time than finding well that's not entirely true it depends on what you're working with anyway all of that is for another video god i don't look forward to having to talk about virtual textures because i barely understand it myself anyway there's a beautiful mesh i am actually really proud of it uh, as I mentioned, though, you can see here, the because it's a skirt, the movement is a little bit off. And there's a lot of things with the weights I could have done better. You know how it is. Uh, we're learning, we're learning, right? Anyway, um, that was this. That was everything for this video. I, I'm specifically moving over here because I'm trying really hard to avoid spoiling people too much. Okay, bye!